and his chest was, was bruised and blood was coming out of his mouth. He was hanging over the side of the bed. That was the infamous serial killer Jeffrey Dahmer, who you will see later on down on this list. There is just something about criminal confessions that gives me the creeps. And you never know what they're about to confess to, or what people are actually capable of doing. I can't understand what brings a person to end someone's life, but maybe with this video, we'll gain greater insight into the minds of a serial killer. How's it going YouTube? I'm your host for this one, Landon Dalitzing, and why Welcome back to this channel. Thank you guys so much for clicking on this video. If you guys like it, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe. We're on the road to 5 million subscribers. Can we do it? So police officers have a variety of techniques that they use in order to get people to tell the truth or to confess to a crime. The interrogation process can last for hours until the investigators have enough to issue a warrant for their arrest. This can be very dangerous because the longer you hold someone for questioning, the judge might rule it as a coerced confession, which means the confession could be thrown out. However, the confessions you are about to see are very real and frightening. So let's take a look at this one. This is the top 10 scary convict confessions that were caught on tape. This chilling list begins with Israel Keys in at number 10. Israel Keys was captured in October of 2012 because he was suspected of kidnapping and murdering a teenage girl from Alaska. While he was interrogated for hours and hours, he revealed a a lot to the investigators. Smart, I would let them come to me. Just remote area. He admitted to committing a bunch of violent crimes that started as early as 1996. He confessed to killing at least 8 people and sexually violating them. He was being held in custody as he waited for his trial to start, but he committed suicide in prison. He left a suicide note under his bed that said, Owed to murder, but it didn't give police insight into the other killings that he confessed to. Up next, number 9, we have Edward Edwards. Murder committed there in Georgia County, and uh, I'm responsible for it, and I am wanting the death penalty. Between the years of 1977 and 1996, he murdered at least five people, but it is suspected that he killed several more. There are even theories that link Ed Edwards to a variety of famous crimes. He was even suspected of being the Zodiac Killer, or that he was the Golden State Killer. He was sentenced to death after he confessed to killing at least five people, but he died in prison of natural causes a month later. But as you saw from the clip, he wanted the death penalty because he couldn't get killing out of his mind. David Zink makes his mark in at number eight. I woke up, she said, up where? I said, up where? When she looked up, I broke her neck. Okay. How did you do that? This guy was seriously a sadistic killer. He had confessed to tying a young woman to a tree in a cemetery, breaking her neck, and slicing her spinal cord to ensure that she wouldn't live. Investigators said that this killing was an unspeakable act of violence. So after his confession, he was convicted of capital murder and sentenced to death by lethal injection. In his final statement before death, he said that death by lethal injection is better than spending the rest of your life in prison. He also apologized to the victim's family and said that he hopes his execution will bring them the peace and satisfaction they seek. He was just a twisted and sick individual and I think I'm glad they gave him the death penalty. Gerard Murray stabs his way into this list at number 7. Uh, shot once, missed. Shot a second time, hit. He was driving 10-15 miles an hour so it was rather slow. Uh, ran around the hood of the car, I heard him uh, gurgling, so I shot him again and then shoved him down in the ditch. Gerard Murray also told the investigators that he wanted to show what it felt like to kill someone and just hours after he confessed to the brutal murder, he was arrested in 2012. He was charged with first degree murder after he shot his college classmate, General Sanchez, who was 18 years old at the time. In one of his other statements, he said, said to the court that he doesn't know when he might hurt someone again and that he always thinks about hurting someone else. He also told the judge that he doesn't feel any remorse for killing but he was found not guilty because of insanity. Michael Hernandez brings us to number 6. He was a teenager who was sentenced to life in prison for brutally stabbing one of his classmates and this occurred at a middle school. He was only 14 years old when he committed the murder and there was a ton of evidence presented at the trial 
profile that showed he was obsessed with becoming a serial killer. I took the knife out and I proceeded to slit his throat. Did Jamie say or do anything? Did he put up a struggle? Yes, he did. He turned around after I did that. He asked me not to kill him. However, Michael was granted a new sentencing after the US Supreme Court in 2012 banned automatic life terms without the possibility of parole for minors convicted of murder. So what does that mean? His case will be under the traditional review, which means he has the possibility of being released from prison because he would have served a total of 25 years. Okay, brace yourselves for number five because we have a very sadistic serial killer. You don't feel bad about killing anyone. Not personally, that I've personally done myself, no. Okay, that was John Hughes. He is a self-confessed serial killer who admitted to police that he killed a truck driver in 2008, but he also later confessed to a reporter that he has killed many more people as well. People in Mississippi, Missouri, and Ohio. As far as the murders that I've been a part of, but there's been quite a few. A dozen? At least. 20? Under. Somewhere around the 15. Somewhere around in there. Is this real life right now? And if that wasn't scary enough, take a look at this. I wouldn't advise anyone to, I mean, not unless, not unless they want a line loose in the streets. Because you'd kill again. More than positive. Well, I think for the safety of society in general, he is going to be locked up for a very long time. Moving things along, in at number four, we have Ed Kemper. Back then, in 1972 and 73, unable to live with the fact that I just stabbed to death and cut the throat of an innocent young woman. This man is responsible for the brutal slaying of 10 people, including his grandparents and even his own mother. He said that he engaged in many acts of necrophilia, and he said that he has even eaten flesh of one of his victims. I mean, this guy needs some serious psychiatric counseling if that would even help him. There's probably no help for this guy. When he was a little boy, he would decapitate his sister's dolls and even stalked his second grade teacher with a knife. And at the age of 10 years old, he killed the family cat. And when he was 13 years old, he did it again. This time he kept pieces of the animals in his closet until his mother found them. Those are some serious red flags. And I think it's safe to say that he was not only insane, but he was deranged as well. Robert Picton confesses in at number three. The serial killer Robert Picton was filmed admitting to 49 murders to an undercover policeman and he even said that he wanted to do one more to just make it, you know, an even 50. This is sick. In the video you could tell that he was disappointed, that he was just one away from killing 50 people. He actually butchered his victims on his farm located near Vancouver, Canada. He would lure sex workers to his farm with drugs and alcohol before he murdered them and fed the remains to his pigs. or. He he would grind them up and mix them with animal meat and, and then he would sell it to the public. Some of the women were injected with antifreeze while others were stabbed to death. He admitted that the reason why he was arrested was because he was getting too sloppy. Things get even more scarier with this next one. We have the BTK confessions in at number two. Uh, put a plastic bag over his head and then some cords and tighten it. The BTK killer was Dennis Rader, and BTK stands for Blind Torture Kill, because that was his preferred method of killing his victims. Between the years of 1974 and 1991, he killed 10 people in Kansas, and he was notoriously known for sending taunting letters to the police and newspapers that described the gory details of each of his murders. Well, after a decade-long hiatus, he began sending letters to the police in 2004, which led to his eventual arrest and guilty confession. Strangling, the, either the... Uh Barrett broke, or he broke his bonds, and he jumped up real quick like. I pulled my gun and quickly shot him. I hit him in the head. He fell over. Uh, I could see the blood, and as far as I concerned, he you know, I thought he was down. So he's currently serving 10 consecutive life sentences at a maximum security prison in Kansas. So just in case this guy was able to live to like a thousand years old, uh, they got him booked in prison. He's never, he's never leaving. And now topping this freaky list in at number one, we have Jeffrey Dahmer. And his chest was 
was bruised and blood was coming out of his mouth. He was hanging over the side of the bed. And uh, I have no memory of beating him to death, but I must have. He has a very morbid and long confession list that includes rape, murder, and dismemberment of 17 men and boys from 1978 to 1991. I'm not sure how something like that goes on for that long. He also liked to indulge in necrophilia, cannibalism, and he would preserve the body parts in his freezer. He was sentenced to 16 terms of life imprisonment, but he was beaten to death by a fellow inmate at the Columbia Correctional Institution, and that was back in 1994 because the inmate couldn't stand and his sadistic humor. Jeffrey Dahmer is one of the most recognized serial killers because of his gruesome killing techniques. He used to drill holes in the heads of his victims while they were drugged up but still alive and then he would pour hydrochloric acid into their brains. Who the heck would think of doing something like this? Well, Jeffrey Dahmer did. I can't even imagine. Well, this is the end of this video. I just want to say thank you guys so much and I'll see you guys all in the